when I saw screenshots of the new Kirby game showing me that Kirby can absolutely put a whole vending machine in his mouth and go on to live a full life, I thought to myself, now that's a video game. That's what gaming's for. The sheer joy of seeing Kirby eat car and call it mouthful mode ignited a long lost zest for life within me. My car and I'm all coming to get you. <laughs> it reminded me of my own small mouth and the challenges I face. The Kirby in the Forgotten Land demo lets you play three tasty Kirby levels, and what it really showcases is that cutscenes can be made with Kirby in them. When I play a game, I love to watch a cutscene, then to run a little bit and find another epic cutscene. Kirby really delivers on that by peppering its gameplay with cutscene for all the cutscene fans. I love being car Kirby. I love too that Kirby sees a traffic cone and thinks, yeah, I'm gonna put that in my mouth. Being the big items is fun, although it does feel like we're simply absorbing Mario Odyssey's hat possession mechanic and stuffing that into a Kirby game. Why is there a mouthful mode when Kirby's already mouthing things every day? With Mario it's like, oh my god, this man previously just jumped on things, but now he has incredible sci-fi hat powers that make him an absolute god among plumbers. With Kirby it's like, oh, some things he can't digest now so he can look cool, but he has to spit out the car sometime, I guess. Okay. Please don't make me spell the gun. No! I played on wild mode, so you know I'm serious and not intimidated by tough and challenging games. But honestly, when Kirby isn't in mouthful mode, the demo levels feel a bit lacking. We begin Kirby's adventure on a beach leading into a lush jungle, a vast expanse of Kirby's serene world where the player must face the challenge of running to the next screen. Now this might not seem like a problem, but you have to remember that Kirby has little tiny legs. There shouldn't be this much space. The empty feeling of certain sections of the game is exacerbated by the weird compromise between a bird's eye view and a straight on view that the camera takes. It gives it such a powerful Wii era vibe alongside the slightly too saturated look of the levels and the immediately unappealing music which is trying so hard to impart a sense of wondrous adventure while sounding like <laughs> Kirby deserves bespoke beats to relax and suck up enemies to, not a discarded Mario's Odyssey demo tape. It's not just the early screens and atmosphere that feel lacking though. There's one big gorgeous gorilla you get to fight at the end of the third demo level, and I have many compliments to pay him. He's a big mad boy, and he has a beautiful small butt, but the way this boss battle plays out is disappointing. Despite it being a cool gorilla battle in an abandoned Dawn of the Dead mall situation. Ooh, bananas! Before the fight, you can choose between three of Kirby's yummy abilities, you know, to help you take that big boy out, but choosing an ability at all just makes the battle worse, particularly if you choose the bomb ability since when you throw a bomb it takes a weirdly long time to detonate. A lot of my playthrough of this demo was spent awkwardly waiting for my bomb to go off, but regardless of the ability you go for, the best way to deal with this gorilla is to throw that shit away and gobble up the stars he swipes at you instead. Mmm. This game doesn't seem to realize that I chose wild mode. I wanted to be wild. I didn't want to be a little baby playing a Kirby game for babies. This is for babies, and... I'm not one. But you know what's good? This bull. <laughs> Look at him. I love him. This is my favorite guy, honestly. At one point in the demo, you meet this ugly little Neopet who needs your help, and it was at this moment when I really started to question some of those texture choices. How do these boxes look too hairy and not hairy enough at the same time? Why does the cage look like that? It's a very odd smashing together of smooth, bright, modern graphics with Nintendo 64 textures, and it just isn't stylized enough to work for me. Make an Akami-style Kirby IMO. It's not as if Kirby isn't friends with an accomplished painter. Like, it looks okay, but Kirby deserves to go beyond the standard. Kirby deserves the beauty and breadth that Mario and Mr. Zelda have been getting. Where is the sexy new Kirby look to go along with his new modes? Where is the bespoke Kirby Cold Jazz fusion? Where's the swift updated gameplay showing that Kirby is, in fact, an incredible badass? He can still be for the children. He can still be a goofy little ball who's here to be cute and collect pieces of cake, but he can be more than one small ball entering the world of 3D. At the end of the demo, a video shows us some neat stuff from the full game. You can build a little Kirby town, you can upgrade your abilities, and you can collect a bunch of gadgets. Who is this? Who is this? Who? It's Kirby! It's Kirby! Some of that stuff looks really cool, and I hope that the full game feels more chunky than this demo did, but you know, I just really want some solid driving time. Kirby, steal another car with your mouth, please. That's gaming. That's what's... that's what's gaming.